Um, yes, we're, we're here in, uh, in Kalua Castle at the launch of The Boy in the Mask by uh, Dick Benson Joyles. We're talking to uh, Thomas Pakenham, a noted historian. And we're going to ask um, uh, Thomas about his uh, association with John Betjeman, who frequented his home, Tullinally Castle, in the 30s and the 40s. Thomas, do you have something to tell us? Well, I was a great admirer of John Betjeman. He, he was a family friend. And I actually, when I went to prep school in Oxford, I wore John Betjeman's blazer, the school blazer, with a dragon on it. We, it's called the Dragon School, and I was very proud of that. I, I, I loved his poetry, and as I grew up, I knew him as a conservationist. I was on committees with him. But uh, long before my time, before I moved into Tallinnale, at a family house in Westmeath, about 15 miles away from here. Long before then, John Betjeman used to c come and stay, because he was a great friend of my uncle, who then uh, owned it. And he wrote some of his best poems uh, about Westmeath, including the famous ballad of Sir John Piers, this rascally baronet, and uh, who seduced uh, Lady Cloncurry. And, and, and for his sins, he was sued for Crim Con for 100,000 pounds, which is about 10 million in our money. And yeah. of course he couldn't pay, and he f fled to the Isle of Man and finally came back. And the end of the poem, he's, he's a corpse in the graveyard at, at, um, uh, um, the, uh, at Christianach, yeah. yes, Christianach, which is now a complete ruin. Okay. But uh, you, you did say that uh, uh, if John Betjeman hadn't been associated with Tully Nally and your family, he probably would never have come here or written poetry that was associated with Ireland. I, I don't think so. I, he would have probably gone to other parts of Ireland which were more famous, because Westmeath is always considered rather backwater. <laughs> but um, no, I think he loved it. He loved dim piers too. Perhaps he liked dim landscapes. <laughs> he, he, he collected dim piers. I d I'm not sure if he called my uncle a dim pier, but he certainly... <laughs> He certainly wasn't a dim peer, but um, uh, John was a great joker, practical joker, a terrific, uh, terrific performer, yeah. uh, cap and bells, really, I mean, a jester. And in old age, he became famous on television for his, his jokes, really, because he was a serious man, too, <laughs> behind the mask. Wow. Now, but when you say dim landscape, he did have that famous poem, Come Friendly Bombs Fall on Slough. Yes, come friendly bombs. I bet they didn't forgive him for that in Slough. No, no, come friendly bombs descend on Slough. Um, he, he, uh, I think he loved Ireland, and, and um, he, he wrote in our visitor's book, Sean no better man, in, written in a sort of a sham Celtic yes. script. Okay. And we've got quite a few entries. And he, he, I'd like to have, I'd like to have, uh, he did watercolours. I wonder if he did one of our house. He certainly did one of our house in Oxford, which he mm. knew well and yeah. gave to my mother. Mm. But um, do you think he was a great poet or just a, a, a fun man? Well, I think he was both, but I mean, it was uh, significant that he wrote about Ireland. And he was friends also with Patrick Kavner. He has also a famous, famous poet, the, uh, poem from that time, uh, Let John Betjeman uh, Call for Me in a Car. That's Patrick Kavner's line. Uh, yes, yes. yes. Um, uh, uh, can I say a word about this book? Because yeah, sure, I, I, sure. I've just yeah. been reading it and I've got to launch it in 10 minutes. <laughs> and I think that um, uh, Dick Benson Giles has done a terrific job in unearthing the Irish side of, of, of uh, the Irish roots of uh, Lawrence of Arabia, what we call a slightly ridiculous name, isn't it? I'm sure in Arabia they didn't call him Lawrence of Arabia. <laughs> it was actually coined by an American film man called Lowell Thomas, who had a film camera when other people didn't and wanted a good subject. And Lawrence loved playing up to the press, a terrific self-publicist. And he loved and hated publicity, Lawrence did. Mm. And, but he certainly let himself be projected as the superman, mm. the man who'd uh, relieved single-handedly uh, saved Jerusalem. And, and, and of course, he knew it wasn't true. And at times, I think, in black despair, he, he, would, uh, he would really, um, well, he didn't kill himself in the end, except uh, if, unless you call driving a motorbike <laughs> a suicide. Well, yeah. But his Irish roots were very interesting. He never came to Ireland, but he thought a lot about being Irish by origin. Yeah. And his, his letters to people like uh, uh, Mrs. Shaw did describe, which are very well uh, uh, um, put in the book. He described how 
in, early in his life, he rather despised his Irish heritage. You see, the point was, his father, who was a perfectly ordinary Irish country gentleman from mm. not this house, but the adjoining house of the same family, which was in Delvin, just yeah. down mm. the road, his father had run away with the governess, eloped with the governess, yeah. abandoning four daughters and a wife, and reinventing himself uh, under a new name as Mr. Lawrence. Of course, his real name was Chapman, mm. Chapman, like the mm. people here in where we're standing. Yeah. And Lawrence had... Um, uh, deep, deep, deep ambivalence to most things, actually. But he obviously felt his father uh, had abandoned his half sisters, and he loved his father. His mother was uh, a jolly difficult woman. The governess, well, she, you know, you know what governesses are. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your word for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, and 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 uh, 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 the the so, but as he got older, Lawrence, and in the second, the last ten years of his life, I think he came more and more to think of himself as Irish okay, and yeah. be actually proud of those Irish roots. And uh, and and I said. I didn't realize that till I read this book. And I thought that the, um, his account of how, uh, he even played with the idea of buying a little estate in Ireland. Mm. But uh, mm. of course it wasn't, it wasn't to happen. Mm. But he, he, it's a very brilliant summary of his mm. character by his friend, the poet Robert Graves, yes. who was also Irish by origin or had Irish blood. Yeah. And Graves said he had a typical um, uh, uh, Irish character, what Graves called typical, uh, and he talks about the rhetoric of honor, the rhetoric of, of chastity, where we don't quite know how, <laughs> how much that was rhetoric and how much it was <laughs> reality. <laughs> reality. Um, okay. and, uh, yeah. and that he had, could charm the snakes out of trees. He, he, he would have moments of black despair and, 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 and terrible self-doubt. Yeah. And, and, but it's a, it, it's a brilliant summary. The book is very, very good. Yeah. Okay, well, I think we'll have to leave it there. They probably want you back in the, in the, in the other room right now. Th Thomas, Thomas Pikeman, thank you, thank you for talking to us. Thank you for asking.